Hello class, we are looking at a set of multiple choice questions and short and a short answer question on the parametric equation. And so here we go. Um, the curve given by x equals negative 1 plus 2 sec of t and y equals 1 plus 3 tan of t may be expressed in Cartesian form. So that's in terms of x and y. Okay. So, in approaching this, what we have to do is draw on a trig identity and from rearranged equations for x and t, we relate them together to form our Cartesian equation for a curve. And these curves are ellipses and hyperbolas. So, rearrange our x parametric equation for sec of t. Rearrange the y parametric equation for tan of t and then from there we use the trig identity sec squared minus tan squared is equal to 1 and put that together and we get this equivalent form for our um, Cartesian form of the equations which is answer A. Easy yeah? Let's try the next one. Now we have the rule of the relationship determined by the parametric equations. Here we have this is x in terms of a cosec function and y in terms of a cot function. And we have to find the, again, the Cartesian equation of, of this. So how would this work? Let's rearrange the x parametric equation for cosec. And let's rearrange the y parametric equation for cot. Now what is the trig identity we use to uh, connect them two together? There it is. Cosec squared minus cot squared is equal to 1. Now it's very important that those two angles are the same for that trig identity to work. And putting it all together, I get this as our Cartesian equation. And there it is, option A again. Next question. Now this time it's um, a backwards process. An ellipse has a horizontal semi-axis length of 3 and a vertical semi-axis length of 2. Alright, now given that the center of the ellipse has a, a coordinate 1, 3, a possible parametric form of the ellipse is. Alright, so we're thinking about um, information describing the ellipse and we have to work out what the parametric equations are. So what do we know about an ellipse? Well, it has an equation of this form. A minus h squared over a squared plus y minus k squared over b squared, and all equal 1. Okay, now we have to have an understanding of each part of the equation. Here, h and the k, it's the center. And then a, well, we think that, think of a number as the horizontal radius of the ellipse, or another word for that is horizontal semi-axis. Okay? So A is 3 in this case. And then we've got B, the B number. Now, the B number is like your vertical radius. Or in other terms, we say a vertical semi-axis of 2. Okay, so B is 2 there. Very good. And we have know from here, it says the center of an ellipse is 1, 3. So that's our values for H and K. So by linking all that... Let's get our equation that's going to be that's going to fit for this ellipse. Okay, there it is. Now, how do we use that to come up with parametric equations? Well, from experience, we know that um, cos squared of a parameter plus sine squared of a parameter is equal to one. So we can relate the terms together. Cos squared is the same as the x minus 1 squared on 9. Sine squared is the same as the y minus 3 squared on 4. 
Okay, and when we add cos squared plus sine squared, that is equal to 1. So by transposing each, first the x, multiply by the 9, do the square root, and then, and then add 1 to the other side, we get this 4x. And the same for the y, transpose for y, and we get that. Okay? And that is option E. Okay, now we're going to do a short answer question. So a curve is defined by these parametric equations by uh, these parametric equations here. Now we have to show that the curve can be expressed in Cartesian form. And we do that by rearranging the parametric equations for x and y. So from the first one, by subtracting one and squaring, we get x minus one squared is equal to cosec squared. And from the second parametric equation, I'm going to divide by 2 and then square. So I get y squared on 4 is equal to cot squared. Now, how does cosec squared and cot squared relate to each other in a, tr in a trigonometric identity? Now, since cos squared of theta minus cot squared of theta is equal to 1, then that means the Cartesian equation is what we have here. Okay? And that's all you need to do for two marks to show that a curve can be expressed as this form in this equation. Okay? Next question. Sketch the curve defined by the parametric equations. Okay. Now, what we have to do is label any asymptotes with their equations. Now, from the previous part, we worked out what is the Cartesian form of the equation, and there it is. It's an, it's an hyperbola. Okay, and from that equation of the hyperbola, I know the center is 1, 0. Okay, so positive, the positive 1 from here, and there's no number there, so it has to be a 0 from, from here. Okay, now I'm going to plot that point. And then I'm going to work out my vertices. And this is the h minus the a number. And what is the a number in this case? Well, there is no denominator. So when I divide by 1, dividing by 1 in a sense is, a, is the same term we have there. Okay, so we have a, uh, a number of 1. And that gives us these vertices. h minus the a number is 0, 0. And then the h plus the a number at the k, 2, 0. Plot those points. Now let's work out the asymptotes. So I have a gradient of, my, of the asymptotes as plus or minus the b number over the a number. So if you look at the equation, the b number is the 2. Okay, the square root of the 4 gives you a 2, so the b number is 2, and the a number is 1. So my gradient is plus or minus 2. Now let's use that in the, the formula for working out equations of straight lines. Okay, so put in my positive gradient of 2 with a h coordinate as 1 and a k coordinate of 0 and I get y equals 2x minus 2. And let's work out the equation for, for the negative gradient. So negative 2 there and I get a negative 2x plus 2 when I expand. Okay. Now, from that, let's sketch our, our straight line asymptotes. And an easy way to sketch our straight line asymptotes is first, looking at the equation, we've got these y-axis intercepts, minus 2 and a y-axis intercept of plus 2. So I'm going to plot them in there and there. Okay, now a straight line is just going to connect those two dots. And the other point that the straight line passes through is its y-intercept and this point here, the center of the hyperbola. It will pass through right there. Yep, so, and I have to make sure I answer the question correctly. So I'm labeling any asymptotes. So I have to write down the equation of the asymptote next to the line. And again, Connecting the y-intercept with the center gives me um, this positive gradient straight line, which is y equals 2x minus 2. And now we're ready to sketch our hyperbola. We have to start 
up close near the asymptote and then come down moving away from the asymptote, pass through the vertice point and then approach the asymptote again. Shum, like that. And the other side. And there we have it. Fantastic. How did everybody go? I hope that was helpful.